Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. This time we have the rogue decks you should be considering playing for the July 2020 format. I know many locals are opening back up. I know many are still closed. Whether you're playing IRL or online, these are all decks you should be able to play because now that set 10 is out, or at least coming out this weekend with a full release, this is all gonna be stuff that you guys can play going forward. Guys, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss a video. If you want to help the channel out, there are many, many ways to do that down in the description below. Many, many links. We have the Jemmy app and the Patreon where you can get caught up on some competitive articles and some one-on-one -on -one coaching. We have the Dex protection link where you can get all your TCG protection needs like sleeves and deck boxes. And finally, guys, if you want to buy any cards you see in today's video, definitely make sure you use my link in the description to TCG player. All that stuff helps out a great deal. That being said, let's get started. First leader I want to talk about guys, Android 21, specifically Evil Android 21. Now I posted a deck profile for this, also some gameplay on the channel last week. Definitely check that out if you are interested in actually seeing what a deck profile for this leader looks like, but here I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So Android 21 is pretty interesting because of the Piccolo nerf. Because of that, Android 21 is now probably the strongest leader that can still passively gain advantage while not having to attack the opponent. I think that's definitely a very broken mechanic in Dragon Ball Super, being able to gain advantage like that, especially when you have different cards like Super Hellfighter Android 17 that can basically crit your opponent down to four life and you didn't have to attack them one single time. That's pretty stupid busted. Now, I guess you could play that card in 21, but I think it's a bit tight on space to be doing that. So what I offered in my deck profile last week was a blue-green variant. And I think it's very, very good. It's a kind of like a combination of gaining a ton of advantage on your own while also hand controlling and controlling your opponent's resources. So I think it's a very, very fun deck for that reason. You have blue, so you have access to dimension magic, which a lot of these hand control decks don't really have. They don't really have flexible energy. So it's kind of like a new option for you there. Now, I talked about it in that deck profile, but I don't really think any of the blue unisons are too good in 21. One of those being the Gotenks 4-drop unison. I think he would probably be the best one. But the build I showed you guys in particular, it's got way too much green in it to be playing the Gotenks. And really, I don't want to cast the unison on turn 4. I want to be casting unisons earlier because I want to be able to use my free counterplays as early as possible. So for that reason, I started to explore the green unisons. And I really found that I liked Golden Frieza Unison of Malice. He just has really, really good generic effects. Draw one, place a card on top of your deck, and then he gains critical. So like I mentioned before, since your 21 leader does not have to attack the opponent, you're free to just attack them with crit every single turn. And he's a two drop, basically 15k. That's pretty hard for your opponent to deal with. And the minus two gives this leader access to something that she didn't really have before, and that is a topo-like effect. So for the minus two, your opponent can't attack with battle cards unless they basically sacrifice a battle card with energy cost of two or more. So if they want to give up their whole board to start attacking you, you know, by all means, they can try and do that. Now, the main engine I play in the deck is Super Saiyan Rose, Goku Black, a delicate plan paired with Twisted Justice Fuse Zamasu. That was actually a build I played back in set eight as well when this leader came out. I think it was criminally underplayed back then. And I think it's very, very underplayed now. I think it's very powerful. I think this is always probably one of the best engines to play in 21. And now that Violent Predator is banned, I think this is definitely the best engine to play in 21 but one thing i do want to mention about this leader and deck that i was i was asked in the comments of that video but i didn't actually address it in the video and i want to address it now is a way you can kind of one save some money on the db4 as a masu engine because it is a little bit on the pricier side at least for the goku blacks while also making the deck a bit more blue if you wanted to play some more blue stuff because for example in that 21 deck i don't play obuni i don't think you need it in that build when you have a powerful engine like zamasu but you could easily transition into more of an ultra instinct sign goku deck and the reason that works out really well is you can arrival into the goku gohan sands of earth that's going to eat up your field cards summoning sickness effect and then you can evolve into ultra instinct since it's a new card it's not affected by the summoning sickness you attack your opponent can't combo you go for a ginormous triple strike pair that with 21 brilliant idea give him plus 10k critical that's obviously super duper strong so i wanted to talk about all that in today's video guys if you have not played 21 before if you want to play a newer kind of control deck that's a little reminiscent of piccolo but honestly in my opinion a lot more fun play 21 i definitely recommend it next up we're talking about fuse zamasu divine runebringer this is the set 10 zamasu leader i know many people are probably gonna get upset when i say this but i think it's pretty fair to say that this leader and this strategy has definitely been moved to the rogue spot i just don't see this leader doing too much at tournaments but i don't think people are necessarily playing the right build now personally while i do think it's a cool concept i'm not talking about the tragedy overground version of fuzumasu divine Runebringer. this leader is actually a unison destroyer in and of himself 
as long as you build the deck properly now like i said before the, the deck i'm talking about specifically does not play tragedy overground it actually just plays a lot of low to the ground really fast stuff and it really relies on encouraging presence monaka many of you guys might think this card's a meme because of you know its history in the game a lot of you guys might not know what it does real quick if you, your leader gains double strike and draw a card when you activate it it is a one blue extra card now when your leader sacrifices energy to gain dual attack that is a dual attack double strike for free and why it's free is because Zeno Cosmic Unison is going to give you an energy, use that energy for Monaka, you then sacrifice that energy, and Monaka drew a card. So in that exchange, you lost absolutely nothing, and your leader is a 15k dual attack double striker. And that, you know, clears four unison markers on its own. Obviously, that's really good power for going for game. That's really, really solid. Now, the thing about this deck is your turn to awaken is so consistent because you have four Zeno Cosmic Unison. You have four of the Zamasu one drop that gives you energy when you play it. And you play four of the Goku Black two drop that plays to the energy from your hand for free once per turn. Now, the thing with that is most combinations of those three cards is going to give you that turn to awaken. It is very, very consistent. You get flipped. You start attacking unisons. You start attacking leaders. Keep in mind, the other really powerful thing about this leader is that when he attacks, draws a card, that's not once per turn. And again, your leader is inherently going to have dual attack most of the time unless you need to remove a battle card. So with that in mind, that extra draw power is so, so good. So in my opinion, this leader, play it low to the ground. Of course, play the tragedy overground strategy if you want to. I'm by no means saying that that strategy is weak or invalid but what i am saying is i think this unison slaying build is very very good if you guys want to see that actually let me know in the comments below and i'll definitely bring you guys that deck profile but that being said i think that's a great way to play zamasu next up we're talking about trunks envoy of justice another mono blue archetype from set 10 that i don't think is really going to see too much meta spotlight but i think it's actually a really interesting rogue deck to play around with now first of all i did post a deck profile for this on the channel when these cards were revealed so probably about a month or two ago at this point and i do think that ssb vegeto paralyzing prowess is a very very strong boss monster especially when you consider the fact that gogeta hero revived is no longer a card that's playable in the regular format so this card says if your leader cards a blue future trunks when this card's played or attacks your opponent chooses two cards in their hand and places them at the bottom of the deck in any order he is a triple strike deflect barrier a little bit reminiscent of gogeta hero revive but definitely not quite as powerful still powerful though now the thing i think is interesting about trunks is one he can't be critted that was the main thing i was super excited about when he was introduced into the into the game the fact that he just can't take critical damage is so cool then once we got to see that the goku's vegetas and a few other cards that you know basically do things when they get hit out of your life they a lot of them the goku and the vegeta specifically go into your energy and that makes for your easy fusion plays with the vegeto stuff but what i think is really cool is you can still play all that ramp you can still play the life ramp but you don't have to play the SSB Vegito Paralyzing Prowess or anything in that engine. You can look to play other blue boss monsters. You can play UI Sign Goku that we just talked about with the 21 deck. You can play cards like Dragon Fist, SS3 Sun Goku, because your leader basically gives you free energy when you take damage. And nowadays, since Piccolo is nerfed like he is, most leaders are going to have to attack you. And with the Supreme Kai of Time Unison that goes with this deck, you can pretty much, you know, dictate what's in your life in what order, get those ramps off play cards you want to be playing and it doesn't have to be the vegeto engine so i think some more experimentation with this trunks leader is going to go a long way possibly bring it into more of a meta spotlight next up i want to talk about green ginyu i think this is one that really no one's thinking about at the moment but i think now that vegex is nerfed the way it is i think we have to start looking for some other swarmy uh aggro decks like that and i'm not saying we're gonna find anything nearly as broken as vegex i don't i don't want to find anything as broken as vegex because you know it's broken it's not good for the game but we do want to see some other type of swarm strategies i think ginyu is very interesting when you attack with them you play a ginyu and then you draw a card and then recruit the muscle head for example helps you spam more cards to the field which is really nice and personally maybe it's a little too flavorful but i really like the ginyu engine where you play the ginyu the green four drop ginyu when you have all the other ginyu force guys on the board you play that ginyu you swap battle cards with your opponent and then you play Ginyu the Body Snatcher to kind of clean up. It's a lot of free play, which we know free play is very, very powerful. Again, I'm not saying it'll be as powerful as Vegex, but I do think it is something worth exploring nonetheless. Next up, guys, I want to talk about Yamcha Supersonic Striker. Honestly, if you're asking me personally, I would put this leader in a high meta category, but I, I just don't see enough people playing this. I don't see enough people playing Mono Red. Your leader is incredibly powerful. 
hits for 15k on the unawakened side hits for 20k on the awakened side searches for any red card similar to a scrambling assault sun goten where you look at the top two cards of your deck and then on the back side when you deal burn damage you deal an additional damage as long as you have a unison in play and we have that five drop goku i talked about a few videos ago deflect when you play it burn two of your own life burn one of your opponent's life trigger your leader so that's basically two uninteractable damage and then mono red on its own is just very good bowl and the bunny girl is a crazy card yom to the lawless is a crazy card we have topo freeze of death embrace the android 17 rebel reinforcements there's just so many good mono red cards i would actually put this in a meta category but i want to mention it in today's video just because i don't feel like enough people are playing it and i highly recommend it lastly guys this is basically a, a section for gogeta leaders there are so many good gogeta leaders to play right now i've talked about them in many many videos over the past few weeks there's so many good reasons to play these leaders whether it's unisons with the red gogeta leaders the red unisons are so good and so generically powerful that they just make so much sense to play with these leaders because both leaders have double strike one leader can stop counters one leader can automatically kill all the powerful one drops we have in the format freeze of death embrace basil fatal rampage things like that and then you have ss gogeta the unstoppable where he benefits really really highly off of the zeno cosmic unison play a free energy do things with it and then sacrifice it to draw two cards via gogeta's effect i think it's all really powerful stuff so guys these are all decks i wanted to recommend to you guys now that we are in july i want to know what you think in the comments below give me your recommendations as well thanks for watching i will see you guys next time